It's okay not to be okay, but I promise I'm trying. By Ray Ray 118, Chapter 25. As Valentine's Day that year was on a Tuesday, the Hogsmeade trip took place on the Sunday before. Ron and Hermione were becoming increasingly nervous leading up to the day, but relaxed slightly when Harry suggested they all meet up for lunch. That morning, the couples all headed to the village together before separating. It was agreed that Harry and Ginny, Ron and Hermione, Neville and Susan, Blaze and Luna, and Cedric and Cho would all meet up at the Three Broomsticks at noon for lunch. Harry and Ginny made sure to stop by the pub first to ask Madame Rosmerta to save a private room for their large group. Since they had the whole morning to themselves, Harry and Ginny wandered through the village, looking in various shops and talking through their bond. They refilled their sweet supply at Honeydukes, stocking up on joke supplies at Zongo's, and Ginny picked up a few new quills from Scribbin Shafts. Wandering past Madame Puddyfoot's tea shop, Harry paused, looking at the garish decorations. It looked as if the Madame on this particular shop had gone out of her way for Valentine's Day. Ginny also looked over the pink heart and confetti. She shuddered. Merlin, that's unfortunate. Harry tore his eyes away and focused on his girlfriend. Lockhart, right? He asked, knowing what she had been thinking. Ginny nodded, and when they continued walking, switching to mind speak, why would anyone want to eat at a place looking like that? Harry shrugged. It looked pretty busy to me. Maybe some people just like that sort of thing. Ginny also shrugged, clearly not understanding. Harry mentally grinned. Thank Merlin you're not one of those girls, Gin. Ginny gave him a mental shove. I think if I was, I'd kill myself. The couple continued to talk and walk for the rest of the morning, and just before noon headed back to the three broomsticks to meet with their friends. Slowly, the couples began to trickle into the private room Harry had reserved. Ron and Hermione were the first to enter, looking as though they had enjoyed their morning. Neville, Susan, Cedric and Cho came all in around the same time, and Blaze and Luna followed soon after, leading Daphne and Colin Creevy behind them. I hope you don't mind, Blaze said. We ran into each other and I invited them to lunch. Harry nodded, smiling, though he, internally he was very surprised. Daphne had a bit of a reputation as being an ice queen, and Colin was incredibly talkative. Still, there was that whole opposite attract thing. And Blaze and Luna were definitely a strange couple, but they seemed to work. Who was to say Daphne and Colin wouldn't work as well, if they were actually a couple? As the oldest, Cedric had definitely worried he might be feeling a bit on the outskirts of this gathering. But he was pleasantly surprised to be included so much in the conversation. He had worked with most of them in the DA and they had become very good friends. He was particularly pleased with the friendship he had started to form with Harry. The younger boy was incredibly mature for his age, and he was happy that the fourth year had made a conversation with him as they waited for the port key to the World Cup all those months ago. But that seemed to be the starting point of their friendship, and he wasn't ashamed to admit that, since Halloween, he had begun to think of Harry as a sort of younger brother. He was very supportive of Harry and Ginny's relationship, as he could see how much the two cared for each other. It was slightly unnerving to see such intensity in a 14-year-old and a 13-year-old, but with everything that had happened to the two, Cedric figured they were probably forced to grow up faster than normal. The afternoon disappeared in a whirlwind of food and laughter. Madame Rosmerta kept bringing them drinks and snacks, making sure they had everything they needed. The tournament was only mentioned in passing, and for the most part, it was speculation of who would win. Harry thought Cedric was a good shot, but the sixth year Hufflepuff rem was, remained adamant that Harry was his biggest competition. Harry just blushed and stuttered out denials, while everyone else agreed he was the one to beat. When it started to get late, they all headed back to the castle together. Minerva was once more waiting at the gates to see that all the stragglers made it back. She smiled at the large group, which unnerved a few of the students, but Harry was getting used to seeing her softer side by now. He grinned back and Ginny even waved. They left the Transfiguration Professor by the gate and made their way inside, heading for the Great Hall. Harry didn't think he could eat another bite, considering they'd spent their entire afternoon doing nothing but eating and talking. But he sat by his friends anyway and waved to the non-Gryffindors as they separated from their own tables. The large group had drawn many strange looks, most likely because of the two Slytherins present, but they all ignored it. People were getting used to Slytherins being more approachable thanks to the DA, but it was still a bit of a shock to see so many people from different houses interacting without any animosity. 
Two days later was Valentine's Day and Harry came back from his morning run with Ginny to find Ron in a panic. Apparently it had not occurred to him to get Hermione a gift before now. What should I do? He asked worriedly, looking around the room as if there was a perfect gift for him hiding in a corner. Harry looked over at Neville, the other boy, who just shrugged as they made their way over, added to add his two canucks. You two only just started going out, Ron. Have you even made it official yet? Ron shook his head. Harry went over to his trunk to pull out his clothes for the day. As he did so, he talked to his friend down from his fearful state. Since your relationship is new, you don't have to worry about getting something expensive or really meaningful. Neville's right. Yesterday was the first time you guys really spent any time alone. Have you even kissed yet? Ron shook his head again, looking embarrassed. Harry smiled. You're taking it slow, Ron. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means that you think Hermione's special enough that you don't want to screw it up. And the fact you're so worried about not having a present is also a good thing. You want to do it right. And I think you... You should be fine with flowers this year. Do you have any chocolates that haven't been opened yet? Ron went to search his trunk for anything he could use and managed to pull out two separate boxes that hadn't been opened yet. Harry looked them over and pointed to the one on the left. These are sugar free. I think Hermione would probably like them more, considering her parents are dentists. Ron nodded, relieved. How do I get the flowers? He asked, biting his lip. I can't do permanent conjuration. Harry wasn't surprised. Advanced conjuration was NEWT level, and permanent conjuration took a lot of practice and a lot of power. There weren't many witches and wizards who could conjure anything to last more than a few months. There's a nice florist in Hogsmeade. If you send Hedwig with a request and a payment, you could probably have the bouquet delivered at lunchtime. Ron nodded thoughtfully, but then had another thought. But I can't afford roses, he said almost shamefully. Harry shook his head, holding in the sigh. It doesn't have to be roses, Ron. Lilies or irises would just be fine. You could do a mixture of the two and it would look pretty, and it would be much cheaper than roses. Ron nodded again and went out to pull his, his money bag out to see if he had enough. As Harry went to the shower, Neville followed him into the bathroom with his own towel, shaking his head. He's got it bad, doesn't he? Harry laughed and nodded in agreement. He was very pleased with the effort he had made with Neville. The shy boy was no more. Neville Longbottom was growing up. Yeah, I think he does. So, what do you have planned for the lovely Miss Bones? Neville blushed. I got her a necklace and some flowers, he replied. You? Harry's smile turned more secretive. I have dinner all arranged, so we won't be seeing you this evening. Neville nodded. You love her, don't you? It wasn't a question. Harry looked at his friend sharply. Neville shook his head. You don't even realise the way you look at her, do you? He paused, but Harry didn't speak, so Neville continued. Merlin, Harry. It's like your blind man who just learnt to see. The way you look at her, it's like she's the brightest star in the sky. And she looks at you the same way. I don't know if Susan's the one for me, but I hope one day to have someone to look at me that way. Harry blushed, looking down. He hadn't realised it was that easy to see. I do love her, he admitted, glancing towards the door to make sure no one would interrupt them. I know we're young, but I can't help how I feel. There's no question in my mind that Ginny's it for me. It's not a school child, I love you, I love you too. I'm in love with her. I'm taken. I can't explain it. I just... no. Neville nodded, understanding. Most people wouldn't comprehend, or they would tell you to wait a few years. But I get it. It's something you and Ginny have, and the rest of us have no right to tell you what to do. If you know, you know, right? That seemed to be the limit of this heavy conversation that the two could have in the bathroom. So they both separated into different showers and prepared for the day. Ron and Harry made a detour to the Owlery before breakfast so Ron could send his order for a bouquet of flowers. Neville agreed to tell the girls they would catch up in the Great Hall. Harry dropped down next to Ginny with a smile and gave her a kiss on the lips. Happy Valentine's Day, he said softly. Ginny returned the sentiment as Ron sat down as well. 
and a Hermione the box of chocolates with a blush. Happy Valentine's Day, Hermione. He almost looked afraid of her response. Hermione looked at the package and smiled broadly. Thank you, Ron. This is very thoughtful. It's even sugar free. Ron just blushed deeper, more thankful than ever that he had Harry as a best friend. He wondered how his friend had gotten so knowledgeable, but he figured he was just more observant. Ron wondered if he could become like that. It would be nice not to need help to figure out what to give as a present to the girl in his life. Neville joined them a minute later. Apparently he had been sitting with Susan for a while, and he blushed at Harry's knowing look. But he met his gaze steadily. As the four, four fourth years left for the free period before Transfiguration, they were caught up in a wave of Hufflepuffs heading to Charms, and Harry noticed Susan wearing a new necklace. He smiled. Hermione was completely surprised to receive flowers at lunch and gave Ron a kiss on the cheek, both of them blushing fiercely as they separated. They're beautiful, Ron. Thank you so much. She and Ginny left to put the, water, the flowers in some water before heading to their next class. Harry and Neville spent the next few minutes pointedly not making fun of the boy who now resembled a tomato more than anything else. Harry and Ginny found their way once more on the beach in the Room of Requirement that evening, sharing a romantic dinner under the setting sun. Dobby had outdone himself, Harry thought. They sampled the courses. There was Cullen Skink for the first course, by the way, I have no idea what that is. Followed by Beef Wellington with roast potatoes, carrots and peas. Never tried it, just sounds nice. And for dessert, Dobby had supplied a chocolate cake with a fruit platter. Now that's more my speed. Yum. Harry and Ginny were well and truly stuffed as they stood up from the small table that the room had provided. They sunk back into the sand, taking the remainder of the food with it, as the two watched in fascination. I will never understand how this place works. Ginny observed. Harry smiled. Me neither. He agreed. I think we should just accept that it does and be thankful. They made their way down the beach before Harry pulled his girlfriend down into the sand, kissing her passionately. They were both breathing hard when they separated a few minutes later. I have something for you, Harry said, pulling a box out of his pocket. Ginny shook her head, smiling. Harry, you've already done so much. You don't need to get me anything. Harry just held it out. Gin, I don't do anything for you because I have to. I want to spoil you because you're worth it. I love you, Ginny of Ron Molly Weasley. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I don't care how young we are. I know in my heart that you're the one for me. I don't need a bond to tell me that or to be a certain age to know. I'm going to spend the rest of my life buying you presents and treating you like the queen you are. We belong together. Wow, respect women, Harry Potter. Whoop, whoop. Ginny's eyes widened. That sounded an awful lot like a proposal, and she trembled as she opened the box he had pushed into her hands. She wasn't sure if she was relieved or disappointed to find a pair of sapphire earrings rather than a ring. They were beautiful, without question. Simple, small sapphire studs, but they sparkled in their white gold setting. She looked up at Harry, tears in her eyes. Harry. Harry smiled and reached out to brush her hair off her shoulder. They pale in comparison to you, he whispered, leaning forward to kiss her again. The two of them barely made it back in time for curfew. They ran into Minerva as they hurried up to the tower, but she just smiled and shook her head. Hurry along, you two. She admolished, laughing a little as Harry and Ginny blushed, quickening their pace. Her friends were all still in the common room, but thankfully didn't ask for details on their evening. Though Ginny was complimented by Hermione on her new earrings. It seemed amazing how romantic her male friend had become before this year. She wouldn't have thought he had it in him. End of chapter 25, part 1. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this. Loving how lovey-dovey it is. I'm not much of a Valentine's girl myself, but I love a good bit of fluff. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and spread the news about my channel so that it can grow and I can make even more of these videos. Love doing this. I hope you guys have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in cha chapter 25, part two. Bye!